Hey guys, it's Jazzy. I have something really important to talk about today. I have done previous videos on this subject before and I always promised I was going to get into further detail about it. Those of you who are newer followers of mine may not have known this, but about a year ago, from actually right now, a year ago today, I had really terrible acne. It was all along my jawline, it was really terrible. And although I still have scars and some bumps I'm getting rid of, it is like night and day how my skin is. Um, it's something I dealt with growing up since I was in high school. I even was in a proactive commercial because I was one of their testimonials for their extra strength acne formula. Their regular strength was clearly not enough, but um, their extra strength really helped a lot with my skin for the time being until the cleansers and the toner started like burning the hell out of my skin. I'm not kidding, to a point where my skin was so dry that I would scratch my eyebrow and dandruff would come down. I would put their toner and their cream on after I would wash my face and it would feel like like someone was putting alcohol on a wound. It was really bad and it was really painful. After a while I decided, you know, maybe my skin kind of healed itself and I can get off of Proactive and if it came back I can always circle back and get it again. I never did get it again because I was really just too afraid to burn my skin the way that I had in the past. So I ended up just using regular facial cleansers I found in the store um, and it never really helped. So it wasn't until I would say about my, a year into being vegan, it got really, really bad. Probably the worst it had ever been, which was really discouraging for me because I really believed that I was much healthier being vegan and I would tell everyone how wonderful it was and really I was a, a huge advocate of going cruelty free and I wasn't sure why my, why my skin was not agreeing with that. I couldn't pinpoint what the problem was because in my head I was only eating plant based things so what could possibly be the reason why my skin was so angry? Whenever I would look up online what could cause acne, especially in adults, it was usually dairy eggs, things I was not consuming. So this was really frustrating for me and I tried all these natural things to get rid of it. I tried cleansing with coconut oil, uh, using apple cider vinegar as a toner, and then I, did, I found out with research that your acne tends to be a result of how kind of the health that your digestive system is in. So it, it circles back to gut health. Had I never had acne, I probably would never be, I would never know about gut health, which I guess is a blessing in disguise because I really love learning about it. I want to talk to you about what I have found, what I've learned throughout the years, and I'm still learning, I'm still getting better, and you know, obviously my skin is still not absolutely perfect, I do still have acne scars, but it has gotten so, so much better, and surprisingly it was a lot easier to get to this point than I thought it would. About last year, I had gone to a natural doctor who basically, I believe it's called an iridologist where they look into your eye and study your health based on what they see in your eye, it's pretty cool. And he told me right away that my lymph system was running a bit slow and my digestive system was looking a little bit sluggish. Aside from my skin, I had felt perfectly healthy. I didn't feel like I needed anything, any type of major improvement. So I told him I was vegan, and he's like, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy. And I was like, um, excuse me, because I believe that it did. I mean, obviously I understand that someone could live off of cakes and pastries and not be healthy, but I, am, I was actually eating lots of whole foods. But he told me that my skin looked really pasty and really pale right off the bat when he saw me. It was very textured, it just looks very irritated. So, okay, I'm finally, I'm just gonna get into what I have changed because I'm sure you're dying to know. Do these look familiar to you? How often are you eating these products? Because let me tell you something. When I first got into fitness, uh, I had the belief that I needed a ton of protein in order to see gains, in order to lose weight, build muscle, etc, etc. And when you look at a whole foods plant-based diet, it tends to be very rich in carbs. And at the time, I was following macros which you know, means that you have to consume anywhere from 120 to 130 grams of protein for my size. And I'm sorry, but a lot of plant-based foods just don't have that protein content. So looking at things like these, these became my best friends. These are lightly seasoned chicken scallopini, 11 grams of protein per serving, which means this little filet, this little chicken filet here is 11 grams of protein. 
and me needing 120, 130 grams of protein a day, I was using stuff like this in almost every single meal. I was using Beyond Burgers, um, Beyond Beef Crumbles, I was using things like this, the crispy chicken strips as well. I was using Boca Burgers because all of those have very high protein content. And when I was eating these, it's not like my side, my side dish would be fries and bread or anything. I was doing a side of broccoli, a side of quinoa, a side of a, you know, a spinach salad. So in my opinion, in my head at the time, I was being very healthy. Um, it wasn't until I started diving deeper into the ingredients that are on the label of these items here. To some of you guys, it may seem like common sense, but when you look at the label here, you see things like non-GMO verified, gluten-free, all of these things that make it appear as though it's, it's healthy, it's dairy-free, it's kosher, always vegan, plant protein. So to someone, to a novice, someone who is just getting the hang of this plant-based fitness thing, this seems like it would be a really awesome tool to use in your meals, not to mention they are freaking delicious. Like you can make all types of really amazing food with these items right here. So let me tell you a little bit about the ingredients that are in those products. For starters, the ingredients read as follows. Water, soy protein isolate, canola oil, methyl cellulose, organic distilled vinegar, tapioca starch, yeast extract, sugar, vegetables, potato starch, quinoa, natural flavors, color added, mushroom extract concentrate, guar gum. So, I don't know everything about every ingredient that is, that's on this label, but I can tell you canola oil is something that Medical Medium talks a lot about. He says canola oil acts to the body the same way battery acid would. It is on his list of things that you should never ever consume, along with dairy, eggs, and other things that are also known to cause acne for people. So canola oil, it being the second ingredient in this product, tells you that there is a lot of it in there. Another red flag for me is it says color added and natural flavors. Natural flavors is a fancy way for describing a bunch of crap for your body. Medical Medium also talks about natural flavors a lot. I'll actually see if I can pull up what he said. Medical Medium says any ingredient with the name like natural flavors is hidden MSG. Natural cherry flavor, natural orange flavor, natural lemon flavor, these are not just fruit extracts and they're not your friends. Moms take heed, natural flavors are one of the newest and stealthiest, now you see it, now you don't tricks for hiding MSG. So there you have it, natural flavors we all think is okay and good for us because we think it's natural, actually it is hidden MSG which is a major problem. So now let's talk about canola oil which is in many, many of our health foods that you find in the stores, especially packaged health foods. So canola oil is mostly GMO at this point, which Medical Medium does say. By the way, I'm reading this right off of the Medical Medium book. Um, I highly recommend it, but he says, canola oil has an effect similar to battery acid on the inside of your arteries, creating significant vascular damage. He proceeds to mention that even if you have a dish that is full of really healthy foods, so you have a giant salad full of a ton of beautiful ingredients and one ingredient in there is canola oil, you are better off eliminating the entire salad. So that is how serious canola oil is and why you should avoid it. These types of products, I don't want to only um, isolate Gardein because you know, Beyond Burgers, same thing, the second ingredient is also canola oil and if you have ever made, if you ever cooked one of those, it is full of oil, part of the reason why they probably taste so good. So you want to be very cautious with this because a lot of us are really chasing these protein goals and we think that we're consuming stuff that's healthy and good for us because it's plant-based and it's not. So you want to be very careful and listen to your body. I would recommend just right off the bat eliminating them so you don't have to go through this entire roller coaster that I did because it's not like the moment I got rid of them, my skin totally healed. I did go through a number of different steps in order to make this happen. I did the heavy metals detox and it did improve my skin significantly. It did replenish a lot of the natural color in my skin and it did help with the healing of the acne scars. But I've had to do a lot of things in order to help boost my lymph system. I've done dry brushing, the suction cups on the face. So you don't want to get involved in all of that because not only does acne really hurt your confidence, but it leaves scars and it leaves texture on your skin and it just makes one feel super self-conscious. At least it did for me. I would have to wear a lot of heavy makeup 
Um, if any of you have heard of the brand, the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation, actually I can show it to you. So this stuff here, is it focusing? This stuff here was my absolute best friend. It is a very, very, I mean it's kind of dried out, it's actually all dried out now, I should throw it away, but it is very high pigmented makeup, like one little dot could probably go across your entire face and cover your entire face, but this literally felt like paint on my face because regular foundations were not, uh, they didn't have enough coverage to cover all of the redness that I was facing, and I'm telling you, I just look like I had a cake face because I was not able to cover all of the redness and all the craziness that was going on. I mean, in some sections, my skin was super dry, in others, it was super oily. It was just a big mess. I hope I haven't thrown too much info at you guys. I do want to give you a little more insight on what I have been doing in place of these items here, what I've been eating, and how I've been taking care of my skin. So for starters, uh, in the past, I wasn't super crazy about the type of makeup I would use. I mean, I was really just looking for what would cover. And to be honest, I don't know if Marc Jacobs is a cruelty-free or vegan company when it comes to their makeup. My makeup probably did not have the cleanest ingredients. Now I only use very clean ingredient makeup. I recently got into the um, Tarte Foundation Amazonian Clay because it is cruelty-free, uh, vegan, and they claim to not use any synthetic chemicals. And I've also found that I really like the Arbonne um, Foundation. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I think they only have one. And they're also known to be a cruelty-free, clean brand. Also, in regards to diet, I have just completely turned over to a whole foods plant-based diet. I don't use mock meats anymore. I rarely ever use mock cheeses. And if I do, I use brands like Miyoko's because the ingredients are super simple, very clean. I don't use brand brands like Daya anymore because the ingredients are definitely not up to very high standards. And the same thing with Follow Your Heart, many of their dressings are high in canola oil and just other ingredients that I don't want to put into my body anymore. Those were, those were things I used to use a lot of, so I've completely done away with those. For my protein sources, I do just mostly beans, I do lots of quinoa, I do brown rice, I do lots of leafy greens, and I find different ways to dress these things up. A lot of ways you can make these ingredients super delicious. Uh, and I try to stay away from anything that comes in a package that has any type of preservative. Being more on the natural side of things, on the whole food plant-based side of things, because things that tend to come in a bag, a box, a bottle, they have stuff that are just not friendly to the body and not only give you skin conditions, but can also result in weight gain and other types of issues that go on in the body. If you read more on medical medium, canola oil will not just damage your skin, it does a lot to the body, likewise with the other ingredients that are in there. So in my case, it totally affected my skin, but in others, their skin may be fine and they can have a, a number of other issues going on in their body related to them consuming these things. So for those of you, my plant-based people, please don't feel like you need to consume these items in order to reach your fitness goals. It is quite the opposite. It. Once you sim simplify your diet and stick to whole foods plant-based, you won't have weight issues and it, well, assuming that you're also working with someone that's going to take care of your calories and kind of show you the ropes on how to do this correctly, you, you don't have weight issues, you don't have skin issues. When you're filling your body with fruits and vegetables and things that it really enjoys, you're going to be in much better shape and not be dealing with weight, acne, and other types of issues that we're dealing with in today's day and age. I hope this was helpful. I know it was a long video. Um, if you have any questions on this matter, definitely reach out because I know a lot of us deal with skin issues and weight issues and we want to figure this out once and for all because we keep, in a sense, being lied to and told that some things are good when in fact they are not. Thanks for watching.